As you guys know, LTX is coming up and this year we've teamed up with DreamHack. So there's gonna be a giant BYOC or bring your own computer LAN party. Pretty sweet. But how can you safely be your C? Well, today we're gonna show you guys and really anyone else who wants to move their computer around how to safely transport a gaming rig, whether you're driving, flying, or even just shipping it to yourself separately. Speaking of tips, you might wanna consider using an Origin PC. You can customize your Origin PC desktop with an NVIDIA GeForce RTX graphics card and pair it with a G-Sync monitor for fast refresh rates. Learn more at the link below. First things first, packing up a computer is a little bit different than other objects because not only do you have to protect the outside, you don't want to dent in the top of your case, but you also have to protect the insides. And that's where we're gonna start today. Inside your PC, some parts are at much higher risk than others. Take for example, the CPU cooler. While a lower profile cooler with a robust metal mounting mechanism might not cause much trouble, a tall, top-heavy cooler like this one, or a cooler that uses plastic push pins, even if it's not that heavy, is liable to either put a lot of torque on the motherboard, potentially bending or breaking it, or worse yet, come detached from the motherboard in shipping and bang around inside your system. I have seen this, it is not pretty. So there's a few ways that you can deal with the cooler. First is to avoid this situation altogether by using an AIO water cooling kit. Yes, they can be expensive and they don't always even cool your system better, but they are a safer solution when it comes to transporting your machine because most of their weight is spread out and mounted to the case rather than hanging off your CPU socket. Option number two is to remove your cooler altogether before you transport it. Now this is labor intensive, and remember, you're gonna have to reapply your thermal paste when you put it all back together, but it definitely improves the safety. The third option is to keep the cooler in place, but to pack extra material around it so that it can't move under any circumstances, and if it comes off, it won't be able to hit anything. I'll show you guys how to do that in just a moment. Our next usual suspect is the hard drive. Now these are actually pretty freaking fragile because a lot of the assemblies, like the disks or the spindle, rely on highly precise alignments where a deviation of even a thousandth of an inch can kill your drive. Not only that, but shocks and vibrations can actually cause the recording heads to rattle against the disks, possibly scratching them. If mounted properly inside your case, which, will then be in a box, it's probably okay to leave it in. However, if you wanna be extra cautious, it can be a good idea to take your hard drives out and carry them with you, or at the very least, make sure that you've backed up your important data before leaving home. Other vulnerable components in your tower include really anything with an edge connector, but not all of them are equally at risk. With your RAM, you can usually feel pretty safe just by putting a couple of zip ties around the outside of the slot for it. And for something like a network card, yes, it fits into a PCIe slot and it has the same number of anchor points as a graphics card, but because it's light, there's very little risk of it coming out. On the subject of graphics cards, these are a problem. And the reason is because they're heavy. They've got just two anchor points, the screw at the back and the slot on the motherboard. So as you can imagine, it's possible for these to even rip the socket apart when the case gets dropped like a courier is apt to do. So the safest course of action is to take it out before transporting your rig. But if you're gonna do this, and this applies to your hard drive too, you should really put it in an anti-static bag. This will prevent electric charges from building up on your device and potentially damaging the circuitry. Now, if you've still got the static shielding bag that came with your GPU or your hard drive, these are the best. Alternatively, you can use a polyethylene anti-static bag. These ones are usually pink. Just keep in mind that these are dissipative rather than static shielding, meaning that yes, they're effective at preventing the buildup of static electricity as they can't create or hold a charge, 
but they will not protect your electronics from a direct static discharge, like a shock from rubbing your feet around on the carpet. Also, if you do remove some parts from your rig, be sure to tie down any loose cables so they aren't banging around or scratching anything inside while they're flailing around. But by this point, you're probably thinking, most system builders like Main Gear or Origin PC, obviously they don't remove all the components before shipping. So how can we do what they do safely? Well, you basically just need to stuff the inside of the system with enough material that nothing inside of it can shift. So one thing that can help you do that is these expanding foam packs that once activated will expand to fill your particular case. They're pretty cool, but they're not the easiest to use and they're definitely not the cheapest option because most systems will require more than one of them. Alternatively, you can scrounge for packing materials that, ooh, that hit the hard drive. Alternatively, you can scrounge around your house for any anti-static foam or bubble wrap or other packing materials. It's certainly better than nothing. Another pro tip is to cut up something like a polyethylene pool noodle or take really nice packing materials like this that you can find and cut them up to size. This was actually a super pro tip that we used to use at NCIX where we'd kind of cut them to size and then wedge them in so that nothing could really move. The idea is that even if the system gets drop kicked, you don't want things shifting too much because once they gain momentum, they can start to gain leverage and wrench things apart. So for now, we're done with the inside. So if you're driving to your next LAN, packing up the inside plus attaching a neato carrying harness or something like that might be all that you need to do. But if your PC is flying as checked luggage or getting shipped on its own, you'll also need to protect the outside. Now the most common recommendation is to ship your PC in the box that the case came with. It's the right size and you probably still have the original packing foam that came with it. But there are a couple of things to keep in mind. One is that this box was designed to protect a case, not a case that was loaded up with an extra 15 to 25 pounds of components. So it's definitely a good idea to put this box inside another box. Two, if your case was shipped with soft foam like this, that could be reusable. But if it was shipped with a harder rigid style foam like this stuff, it could have been spent by its original journey. And like bike helmets, this stuff is designed to take an impact, not a bunch of impacts. Now we've got to solve our last problem. You might have noticed in all of this that there's no room for the monitor. So for that, you'll either have to, one, use a different outer box, a larger one, although I don't necessarily recommend that because your monitor just banging around in there is not gonna be a good time. Or two, you'll have to ship it in a separate box. And once again here, we recommend using the original one wherever possible, with the same caveat that depending on the type of foam that was used, it might not have its original structural rigidity. Another fun option is a lot of these kinds of events actually have the option to rent a monitor when you get to your destination. For example, DreamHack and QuakeCon usually have both PCs and monitors for rent, but that's not an option at LTX 2019. So if you're choosing one large box and you wanna kinda of pack everything in there, the most important thing is to make sure that it's big enough for all of your stuff plus your padding but not so big that you're paying for unnecessary size and weight. You also wanna make sure that you have enough packing material because if there's any space for things to slide around, just like with the inside of the PC, you're going to have a pretty bad time. Now for the inside of an outer box, you can use whatever cheapo packing material you can find. Crumpled up newspaper, anything that you can pull out of the garbage that'll help absorb impacts without adding too much weight. Taping up your box, you wanna use two strips of packing tape across the opening, two perpendicular to that, and then a loop around the edge just for added stability. Repeat that on the other side and you're set. Now, the big question, do you write Fragile, this side up, or computer on the side. Well, 
It's probably not gonna help you since most of the people who handle boxes are moving so fast that they don't have time to give your package any special treatment. And much of the logistics chain is actually automated so that unsympathetic robots who can't read will likely be the ones giving your box most of the abuse. It's worth a try. We're just not gonna tell you to get your hopes up. Speaking of getting your hopes up, I've got my hopes up that with PIA, my true IP address will be hidden and I will be able to bypass geo restrictions and censorship. It's not just hopes, that's how it works. With PIA, you appear as though you are some anonymous person connecting from someplace else. You can use PIA with up to five devices at once. It's got an internet kill switch if your VPN gets disconnected involuntarily so you won't accidentally leak any personal information. It includes Mace, PIA's built-in malware blocker, and it offers a variety of levels of encryption that you can fine tune to your heart's content. They've got apps for Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, and even a Chrome extension, and you can check it out at lmg.gg slash PIA Linus 2. So thanks for watching, guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do, but if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, or check out the link to where to buy the stuff we featured in the video description. I don't know, we put the expanding foam thing in there? Yeah, sure, okay, cool. Also linked in the description is our merch store, which has cool shirts like the one I'm wearing, and cool hoodies like the one I'm wearing and our community forum, which you should totally join.